Hey guys, so this is gonna be the start of probably the longest series, or definitely the longest series that I've done on this channel. It was suggested to me by Jeremy. He's a uh, user in the Discord. His name is Sparky in VA. Uh, check the link down below if you wanna join the Discord. And it was for a USB hub. And he didn't really have any specifics for what type of hub, but kind of talking to some other people in the Discord, we landed on doing a type C upstream. So it takes a type C from your computer or laptop, and then we'll have two or four downstream uh, type A ports. So this would be used if you have a MacBook or something that uh, only has one or two type C ports and you want to break it out into uh, the old school type A uh, larger USB ports. So there's a lot of different options here and I'll go into some of them, but basically this video is just going to be going into the type C protocol in general and looking into kind of how I determine what parts and ICs I would pick for something like this. And at the end, there's still gonna be a lot of different options. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Uh, let me know how you want the actual hub to turn out. Either uh, let me know in the comments or even better, if you join the uh, Discord, you can let me know there. Uh, but with that said, I can jump into, this is basically the best uh, manual or overview of type C that I've been able to find. And as a uh, disclaimer, I have done for work quite a few type C uh, power delivery and charging circuits. I have never done a type C data or anything faster than a uh, a full or high speed, so I've never done any uh, 3.0 or 3.1. So there is a very good chance that on the first revision or two, there's going to be some issues here, but that will hopefully be what's interesting about this video because I'm gonna be learning quite a bit as I go and I'll try to document and go over how I'm kind of figuring out where to start. So. Basically, the biggest couple things with the different uh, USB protocols is first, obviously, the speed. So USB 3.0 and below is what is typically done uh, with, a, can be done with like a type A port. And then when you get to 3.1, that's where it's typically with a type C. That's not completely uh, exclusive. You can certainly have 3.1 in a type A jack, uh, which is a super speed plus, but typically that's when you get into the USB uh, C connector. And then the other big one, which is what I am more familiar with is the power specifications. And it is a really big cluster um, with how different manufacturers handle not even just the power delivery side, but USB in general. Um, you technically should if you're selling a product with USB and you're advertising it as USB, it should be a USB compliant device and they want you to get it certified, which the vast majority of them on Amazon are not. So you essentially should start with uh, a 500 milliamp draw. So if you're designing what's called a downstream port, so that is drawing power from the upstream, it should be able to deliver 500 milliamps, but technically even a backwards compatible, so before USB 2.0, the maximum current is 100 milliamps, which you rarely see shown. So Typically, you can just always be safe with 500 milliamps. And to get anything above 500 milliamps, so again, if you're the downstream device and for whatever you're doing, you need to draw over 500, you are supposed to have to do some sort of either negotiation or at least checking with the upstream device. 
That is done if you're doing a type C device, it's done by checking the CC pins, or if it is a uh, type A connector, you can do it by checking the pull-ups on the data lines. And this uh, document goes over pretty well how the CC lines are. So if you see, uh, so pinouts, since the type C cable is bi-directional, you can plug, or reversible, you can plug it in either way. You have to have the ability to know what orientation you are in. So the way that that is done is by using the offset CC1 and CC2 pins. Depending on how the cable is orientated, that can tell you which way and which connection you need to use for data or any, actually it's just data because the power is reversible on either side. So you're always going to be getting the same V bus and ground no matter the orientation. So on the CC lines, there is always going to be a series of pull up or pull downs, depending on if you're again, the upstream device or the downstream device and the value of those pull downs. If it's a, if you're looking at the upstream device, that will determine how much current you can draw. So depending on those values, that will let you know if you're able to draw up to the three amps from the upstream device. When you get into the PD specification, that is a whole nother can of worms and you'll need to do some sort of other negotiation. But for standard five volt, you can draw up to the three amps simply by checking the value on the CC pins. So in order to do the power delivery, I'm not gonna get into that here because for our hub with the type A downstream, we don't need a uh, power delivery, but maybe if you guys are interested in that, I can do something like that in the future, but simply uh, you hold the current at three amps and then you increase the voltage all the way up to 20 volts. And then once you're at 20 volts, you're allowed to supply, I think it's four amps, uh, five amps. You can increase the current to five amps and then that's how you can get the 100 watts of power. And then I think the next version is going up to 150 watts. So that is essentially how type C works um, in a nutshell. For doing the uh, hub, there's a few options we have, um, mainly depending on uh, the speed that we want to use. So if we're using anything up to high speed, so if we're fine with 480 megs, that allows us to just use the D plus and D minus lines. So simply by checking D plus and D minus, we can uh, use anything up to that uh, high speed, but nothing super speed or above. And what's also nice about the D plus route is if you see they are just flip flopped in the orientation. So a cheap way to get around having to handle the reversible port is if you just short D minus to D minus and D plus on D plus, no matter which way the cable is plugged in, you're always going to have the correct orientation. So the easiest route for us is to simply go with a um, little bit slower speed uh, on the downstream ports. And all we have to do is check the D plus D minus just like it would be uh, on a type A. So if instead of using uh, 2.0 speeds, either full or low speed, if you guys want to make it more interesting, <laughs> and do it with 3.0 or 3.1, so the super speed or super speed plus, we cannot use the D plus and D minus for that. Instead, we have to use the TX and RX pins, and these are two pairs of, or two sets of differential pairs, which again, you see the symmetricalness. So depending on which way it's flipped the cable, that depends on what orientation the TX and RX pins are in. And they have a diagram of how you use the RX and TX pins. 
So for this, you have to use a mux. So you feed in the two sets of differential pairs, which depending on which way the cable is inserted is actually just a single pair or a single set of differential pairs. So depending on the state of those CC pins, the mux will demux it into just the single set of TX and RX for the super speed. And then that single pair will then go into our hub, which then gets distributed out. And the other neat thing with uh, USB-C, which I'm sure you guys are aware of, is you can do uh, type C in what's called the alternative mode or alternate mode. And with that, you feed in again, the two sets of differential pairs into a alt mux and you feed in the SBU one and two pins, which I've never done anything with the alt, alt mode. So the SBU one and two, not sure um, exactly what they're used for. I know that they are low speed lines and then with that, you can feed and get into the USB uh, Phi and into the alt mode Phi. So you can use it for HDMI or DisplayPort, which we are not going to do for this project. And then really the last thing for uh, this hub is if it will be self-powered or externally powered. That kind of depends on how many ports we're doing because if we have the one upstream port and then say we have four downstream ports, if we want to be able to supply uh, the 500 milliamps, which is the minimum for type A, that requires us to be able to have the at least three amp supply. And if we want to supply the 900 milliamps, which a decent bit of devices will require without using PD, we wouldn't be able to. So the alternative is we either use two ports or we use an alternative power supply. So not only does the type C get plugged into the computer, we then have a DC supply plugging into the wall, either five volts or 12 volts, it really doesn't matter. Um, I looked on Amazon at other USB hubs and it seems like there's a mix of both. So let me know about what you would like to see for um, those options. So a question I get quite a lot is how do I actually find the ICs or the microcontrollers for a specific project? And there's kind of two options. The first one is just to search through DigiKey. So for this, say the first thing uh, we're looking for is the hub. So you can simply just look in, uh, look up USB hub and DigiKey will inevitably narrow it down a certain amount. And an easy way is to look at what has the most options. So interface controllers, this is a catch-all for DigiKey. And once I am here, the first couple things I do is make sure it's in stock and narrow it to cut tape. If you don't do the cut tape narrowing, you will basically see three identical parts for every actual unique part, depending on the packaging. Then part status active and then apply. So that basically gives you now the narrowest view that has everything for a USB hub. And then from here, you can narrow it down to standards. So if we want to, want to start with 3.1, we can narrow that down. Now from here, it really just depends on how exactly you need to select the part. Uh, a lot of times I narrow it by part, uh, by price, and then we'll just check from here. So for something like this that I don't have a lot of experience in, the honestly the go-to way I find parts is to just go through TI. Texas Instruments for at least me and my experience, they tend to have the best ICs for virtually every application, especially USB. I've had really good luck with and buck converter, buck or boost converters. They seem to really underrate a lot of the specs. So you can push them to like absolute max without really having to worry 
and they have a really good search. So for Texas Instruments, I would simply just search uh, USB Type-C, and then depending on, again, if we're gonna start from the MUX side or from the hub, it depends where we go from here. So let's say we are doing the hub side first. For this, it would just narrow down to the USB hub, and now here we have tons of different parts that we can then narrow down by what function and speeds, anything like that. And I did do a little bit of research and picked out a couple parts earlier. So for the hub, I found the 8041, which is a four downstream port, one upstream port bridge, and this supports up to 3.0. So it will work for all of our options unless we need to go to a 3.1, but essentially the 3.1s are going to be fairly similar. And the other really nice thing about TI, or I guess two things, is they always have a lot of detailed de design procedures in their data sheet. And I don't care if you do this just for fun as a hobby, or you do it for work like I do, if you're not taking advantage of uh, either evaluation board examples or design examples in the data sheet, you are spending way more time than you should. Uh, they don't always do things the perfect way, but the majority of the time, they are the ones who have the most up-to-date information on these chips so they will lay out stuff and do schematics in a way that makes usually, usually the most sense for their chips. So being able to leverage the uh, examples and then they also have uh, for this 8041, they have an evaluation module for a one upstream and four downstream hub. So basically what we are doing, except this does not have a type C upstream port, so it doesn't have the MUX. I figured I'd at least make it a little interesting on that regard. So the last core part we need is the MUX uh, and DMUX. So again, I started from TI's website and then just uh, MUX uh, type C. So for here, you just go to the USB read drivers and muxes, and then make sure you limit it here to type C. And then here's all of the options uh, for the muxes. Muxes, I don't know if that's a word. Uh, and then what you have to make sure, a lot of these are going to be alt mode, which alt mode again is for the uh, display port, HDMI, audio, all of that, which we do not want. The one that I had previously found is the HD3 SS3220, it's a mouthful. And this is about as simplistic of one that I found. So basically if your upstream port is on the right hand side, your type C port, and you feed your CC pins directly into it, the TX and RX uh, one pair, so the one pair and two pairs are fed in here. And then depending on the value of the CC pins, the MUX will route the signals to your single output pair of TX and RX differential pair. And this can use either GPIO mode or I squared C. I squared C obviously gives you a lot more functionality. I don't know yet if we will need to use that. Um, if we do, then obviously we need a separate microcontroller. So ideally we can get away with just DP, uh, GPIO mode. And now here is a more detailed block diagram. So feeding in the CC2 adjusts the logic here if it's pulled down on the other side or not, because the one will be and then the one will not be looking upstream. And that determines the direction of the MUX. And here are our two sets of differential pairs and then outputs our single set of TX and RX differentials. So then summarizing how this setup would be, assuming we go with the 3.1 or 3.0, so the super speed or super speed plus, 
is on our right on our right hand side we would have the upstream facing type C connector that type C connector gets fed into the two differential pairs two sets of differential pairs into the mux the CC pins go into the mux on the output side of the mux we have our single differential pair set so the single TX and the single RX both of these get fed into our uh, USB four port hub and on here with our super speed hub we feed in our two single differential pair so TX and RX our super speed hub then routes out our separate differential pairs to our four downstream ports and then this again has I squared C or GPIO mode so that will need to determine and then on the downstream side that is where we plug into the type A ports for all of our uh, legacy devices now. So that sums up kind of the overview in a very quick nutshell for the type C protocol. I will include the documents to the or the links to the primer doc and then the potential uh, hub and mux that we might use. So please let me know again the main options are is it self powered or externally powered and then what speed should the hub be whether it's 3.1 or just 2.0. So then depending on that, the next episode will go over most likely a more detailed part selection and I'll go into making all of these schematic parts and then go into starting out the uh, schematic itself. So again, this is going to be a pretty, pretty long uh, project. I want to go into more detail on pretty much every aspect than I typically do. So I hope you enjoyed this first video. Please let me know in the comments uh, any feedback or how you want me to proceed for the next video. And I will see you in the next one.